so hello guys what's up and welcome back to my youtube channel it's me your girl Variston neze and this is neze peperempe <laughs> welcome back to the channel guys and in today's video i'm going to be giving you guys an estimate of what it cost us or what it will cost you to relocate to canada Typically, so while I give you this cost analysis and the estimates, the breakdown, this video is going to be so elaborate and so extensive because it's going to cover the cost breakdown right from the very beginning, right from the very first day till London. Okay, so it's going to be very comprehensive. But while I do that, you can be using your tongue to literally count your teeth. Okay, bearing in mind that you know costs may differ depending on your family size, depending on where you live, yes, your location in Nigeria. I'm going to explain the impact of that on this whole process. And depending on so many things, whether you used an agent or not. So without further ado, let us dive right into this and bring along your pen and paper, okay? So the first cost that you are going to incur when you have decided to relocate from Nigeria is the cost of the national identity card the nimc okay you have to get an nin so prior to now people just go straight and get their international passports done but now before you get your international passports you need to be registered on nin down to even a one day old baby i did my daughter's nin when she was barely two days she couldn't get an international passport without that so that is the policy now everybody must get an nin so there are different ways of getting it you can choose to go to their office you guys know how the nigerian things are when i was working at the bank there were customers of mine that were on that journey for two three four months they'll go to the front of the office there and queue all day under the sun under the rain and they will send all of them back the whole crowd you know how things can be in nigeria so we didn't go through that way we paid for priority service and the guys came to the house to capture us and do everything so the cost for doing it like that is ten thousand naira per person and i know that we did it for all of us including my help chidema so it was like 70k for everybody but for the purpose of this analysis it's let me just call it 60k because we're a family of six so after nin the next cost is the cost of an international passport now if you already have one that is good and fine for you but i'm putting out this video like as though you haven't gotten anything yet like starting from the scratch right so the next cost you're going to incur is the cost of getting an international passport then again the nigerian factor thing also plays out here if you want to go to the office and go and queue and stand and do it normally it would take forever and we didn't have that time to waste so we went for express which the cost the difference from the express and the regular one is not even that much so you can either choose to do the 10 year international passport or the five year international passport and the cost of the express for 10 years is 120,000 that was how much we paid per person but if it's five years it is 75,000 sharply we got our international passports the same week that we started the whole thing capture everything the same week we got the international passports so we're really going for any way that we can relieve stress and tension so we did the um express 10 years my husband's international passport had expired then coincidentally so we just did everything together and it was 120,000 per person but as i said use your tongue to count your teeth if you want to go like regularly to the office and you don't want to you don't have that much money to pay for 10 years good and fine you can start with the five-year issuance and when you come here when you start working and you know pepper don't the rest small small you can always renew but we didn't want that stress we wanted to be done with it once and for all so that was like 720 the next expense that you are going to incur when you are on your journey to relocation especially through the express entry platform is the cost of the ielts exam that is the english test all right the english exam where your proficiency in English will be tested. When we did ours, it was about 80 something thousand, almost 90,000, if I can remember clearly. But now I hear that the fee has been increased and it's going for 106, 116,000. So if you are doing yours now, and of course, if you're married, 
it's advisable for you and your spouse to do it so both of you can get the full points from english tests so that's about 116,000 times two that is 232,000 naira that's what it will cost you and your husband or you and your wife whatever you and your spouse to get the ielts exam right now but during my time we did it for about 80 something thousand now another additional expense that you can incur here is the cost of the ielts training my husband and i went for a training yes we went for a little brush up session like a lesson and we paid like fifty thousand per person which is 100k for the session now it could be a lot more expensive we didn't go to a fancy place we went to one small place but the man knew what he was doing so if you go to all those very fancy buildings where they have billboards past your ielts yes you can end up paying almost two hundred thousand or even more to um for that brush up class but we didn't we went to somewhere a bit smaller so the whole ielts thing the exam plus the coaching was about 200 and something thousand and if you are following the calculation congratulations you have reached your one million benchmark and the journey has not even started you have already spent one million so yes relocating is very very expensive okay do not even let anybody deceive you it is very expensive to relocate but the beautiful thing i'm not trying to scare you the beautiful thing about it is that it's not a cost that you just bear at once it's gradually this month this one will come up you recover next month the next one will come up so it's not a one-off um, expense that you just spend at once so that makes it a little bit you know it cushions the the blow a little so after ielts the next cost that you are going to incur on your relocation journey is the cost of your degree evaluation your west your results evaluation remember in my previous video i'm going to leave the link to that video in the description box i told us that your degree results will be evaluated to ensure that it meets it meets and matches the standard in canada and that also comes with a cost yeah so first thing you're going to do is to get a transcript yes let me not jump that one the first cost you're going to incur on that evaluation journey is to is the cost of the transcript from your school you're going to pay your school to send a transcript to wes or icas or whatever evaluating body that you have chosen to use my transcript was sixty thousand naira and my husband's own was like about forty five thousand naira it can differ from school to school private universities of course are more expensive and if you want to do backyard mobilization if you get what i mean like not like anything illegal but you know you're trying to make people to just be fast you know how that government nigerian thing is you've paid for the transcript but you want someone to take it upon themselves and get it done immediately uncle i appreciate you you know so there are so many other miscellaneous expenses that you might incur that i might not be able to come out and start telling you okay so the cost of the transcript was that you also have to pay west for the evaluation proper and the cost of the evaluation is 250 dollars for the evaluation proper plus 85 dollars for korea so when they evaluate your results they're going to send you the west or the icas certificates showing that your result has been evaluated the cost for shipping that document to you is different from the 250 dollars so 250 dollars for the job of evaluating then 85 dollars for um, the career service so in total that will cost about 335 dollars per person so for two people that will cost 670 canadian dollars so if you put it on your exchange rate the canadian dollars is going for about 850 the last time i checked so that should bring it to about 570 thousand naira for the result evaluation if you add the transcript of a hundred and something thousand that's almost seven hundred thousand now i'm talking for two people not for one person so if it's just you if you're going as a single person you can do the maths so after this is done your ielts your west evaluation you have your international passport and all of that is ready the next thing is to get into the pool right okay so to get into the pool you are going to spend at least five million naira to pay to get into the pool don't fight me. I was trying to scare you. I saw the people were like, ah, Bogbe, Heavenly Father, take me already. <laughs> I am done. <laughs> no, no, I was joking. So, to get into the express entry pool is free of charge. You just have to go to their site and create your profile, 
free of charge and jump in with this west ielts and your international passport that you have already paid and obtained while so, you are in the pool the next thing that you have to start getting ready if you do not already have that is your proof of funds okay very 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 important you know before i came here i didn't understand the importance of proof of funds guys and ladies don't ever think that when you come here one job is waiting for you by your doorstep it might take some time for you to get a job and you're gonna need money to settle in money to pay your rent will be tied you the landlord asks for bulk rent maybe five six months in advance Times it on the calculator. <laughs> you have to buy a car. If you're a family like us that have children, or if you just want a comfortable life, you need a car. There are so many other expenses that you're going to incur. So proof of funds are very important. I'm going to do a very, very detailed video on proof of funds from start to finish and all the stuff about it, okay? So for one person as a single unit traveling, you need at least 13.7 thousand Canadian dollars saved in an account that you are going to show immediately you get your invitation to apply if you are a family of two like husband and wife you need about 17.1 thousand canadian dollars and for us big family like us family of six you need at least 32.7 almost 33 thousand canadian dollars so just imagine the exchange rate now that is almost 30 million as proof of funds is about 28 million if you go by 850 you see the rates are still going up and i always advise people that because of the fluctuating rates and how erratic our money market in nigeria is you always should have like two or three million above so if the calculation for your family size is for example 20 million it's advisable that what you should have in your account is maybe 23 million because that time when the ita comes the rate that you calculated at 600 and something might now be 900 and something and you don't want yourself to be turned down because of insufficient proof of funds so it's better to be safe than sorry okay so right now as a family of six mm, for you to have sufficient proof of funds you should be looking at about 30 million and above when i discuss about proof of funds i'm going to break it down further and you know you can ask all your questions down in the comment section so while you are in the pool waiting for invitation to apply you have your proof of funds secured in the account do not touch it you don't start keeping proof of funds when ita comes no the money should be kept okay so god willing if you are making progress and you get invitations to apply then that is when the real spending starts <laughs> I've been talking are all this are moi moi. The spending has not even begun. You're not even touching the tip of the iceberg. This one is just child's play. When you get your invitation to apply, the first cost that you're going to incur is the cost of medicals. Remember, I told you that Canada is not looking for very, very sick people to come and be liabilities in their health sector. So they're going to test you like lab rats. They're going to check you from head to toe, x-ray, urine, blood, blood pressure, height, weight. And make sure that you are sound and fit to come and walk. <laughs> so there are two centers in Nigeria and that conduct the medicals, and that is the IOM and the Q Life. They are both located in Lagos and Abuja. Now, this is another distinction. Remember, I had explained earlier in the video that you might be incurring more expense or less depending on where you live. So for people like us that live in Port Harcourt, we had to travel all the way from Port Harcourt to Lagos to go do medicals, and medicals is for everybody not just adults even my baby when i just had her at one week plus i had to carry her as tiny as she was looking like a butterfly i carried her like that to lagos for medicals so everybody must do medicals even if it's a newborn baby because of the cost of transportation and logistics we spent a lot more running the medicals the medical exam itself cost like thirty six thousand for children and about forty seven thousand for adults so for a family of four children and two parents you should be looking at about 240,000 for the cost of the medicals and that is fair right good but for people that will be coming from Oweri or Nietzsche Port Harcourt you know people that do not live in Lagos and Abuja then flight was so expensive we got flights for like 100,000 per person and it was for five people so just imagine like 500,000 going and 500,000 coming so flight alone was like 1 million then you don't talk about other expenses logistics taxi talk about the cost of the hotel we had to rent like um a suite like an Airbnb 
two rooms with a parlor. I remember I did a video. I vlogged that that incident. I vlogged that whole trip to you guys. I can remember that video. I vlogged our going. Although I didn't mention I went for medicals, but I just vlogged it. So you can imagine one millionaire on transport alone, flight alone. They talk about all the taxis, all the logistics and all of that. Adding that to the cost of the medicals, you might find yourself spending up to 1.5 million if you're a big family and if you do not live in Lagos or Abuja. Except you want to explore other alternative modes of transportation. Remember I told you guys that it can differ. You can choose to take the bus. That would cut the cost for you. Yeah. So that is how it differs. So that is medicals. After medicals, the next thing you're going to spend money on is what they call the police clearance. I don't know if I explained the police clearance, but for any adult 18 years and above to step foot into Canada, IRCC requires that the police in your country gives you a clearance report to show that you're not a criminal, you're not wanted, you do not have any criminal record, you're not an ex-convict, you're not about to bring in people who would come and you know turn their country into a crime scene so they're very very detailed these guys are very detailed they'll check you medically they will check you psychologically mentally spiritually emotionally ha ah, there's some people that have said in the process immig immigration officers go and check their social media accounts so no matter they are those that post about them um, hailing people that rape women ah that's why you should be careful what you post on social media sometimes in your relocation journey those people will go to your they know everything about you They'll use your name, search you on Facebook, on LinkedIn. They can thoroughly naked you to know everything about you. So the police clearance costs about 60000 per person. These prices might change in the future due to inflation and what's going on in Nigeria. But as at when we did ours, it was 60000 and it was just my husband and I that did. So that was about 120000 Children do not do police clearance is only um, adults 18 and above. So after the medicals and police clearance, the next major expense that you are going to incur is the cost of the permanent residency application. So when you get an invitation to apply, you have your police clearance certificates, you have your medical reports, everything is ready, your proof of funds is ready. There's, you have to submit your application. Remember it is called invitation to apply, meaning they are not offering you, it's not an offer, they are inviting you to come and apply, okay? So when you want to submit that application, it comes at a cost, a heavy cost. And one thing with relocation is the more your family size, the more the expenses. People like us that we are plenty. <laughs> the money you will spend. But if it's just one child, two children, you and your spouse alone, the cost will be coming down small, small, okay? So the more people, the more the cost. So for the submission of permanent residency application, the processing fee is $850 per person. Then aside that processing fee, there is another fee and it's called RPROF, Right of Permanent Residency Fee. So aside from paying the processing fee to process your application, because it is staff, human beings that process the application, so they're going to charge you for taking the time of these people. Now, apart from that processing fee, you're also going to pay this right of permanent residency fee. Okay, for them to give you permanent, permanent residency, you have to pay for it. And that one is about $515 per person. So this application fee of $850 and the right of permanent residency fee of $515 are paid by adults alone, okay? So you and your spouse will pay this $850 plus $515. Let me just add it. $850 plus $515. That's $1,365 per person. $1,365 per person, okay? So for the children, it's not that expensive as that of the adults. For the children, it's $230 per child so for the two adults it is 2730 canadian dollars both for the application fee and the right of permanent residency fee now if you apply and they don't give you permanent residency like your application is declined they'll refund you the other fee that's the right of permanent residency fee because they didn't give you any permanent residency right so they'll refund you that fee but the processing fee of 850 will not be refunded okay so you can choose to pay the 850 first when the application scales through, then you now pay 
the right of permanent residency fee but they always advise that you pay the two of them at once to avoid wasting of time after all they will still refund you if it didn't scale through so for big families that have like four children and two adults you should be looking at paying that's 230 times four that's 920 dollars for the four children then for the two adults 2730 so charges and all of that a family of six should be looking at paying 3820 dollars and that's about three point something million about 3.3 .3 million going with the exchange rate of today if it increases if the exchange rate goes up to go up you can spend up to four million just submitting your application but if the exchange rate goes down which hardly happens you will be in luck so that is the kind of cost that you would incur trying to submit the application so after that application has been submitted and is scaling through you accepted the next cost that will be incurred is the cost of biometrics okay now before you travel to canada they're going to call you and take your biometrics your fingerprints your your pictures side view dimensions everything see these guys are so thorough you cannot escape you cannot run away if you get into their country and commit crime they have all your history and your future on their hands so you travel you see it's it's a process i cannot begin to explain the process you can imagine how many times we've traveled we traveled i for one traveled first for my medicals came back when i had my baby in the year i had to travel again to lagos for another medicals came back time for biometrics i had to travel again to lagos to go for fingerprint because these offices are not in Portacot. many of these offices are only in lagos so you can imagine the cost of flying up and down how expensive flights are so biometrics capture is about 85 dollars per person and luckily biometrics are for only adults so i didn't have to travel with the whole children it was just my husband and i that traveled so for husband and wife you should be looking at spending about 170 dollars for biometrics that's about 144 thousand but if you have to travel from your base to Lagos, cost of flight and everything, that endeavor can take you another 500,000. It will definitely take you above 500,000 when you talk about lodging in a hotel and other logistic you know, expenses that comes with traveling. So that's that for biometrics. So after biometrics, the next cost that you will incur is the cost of taking a professional photograph. Okay, now I've mentioned it in my video earlier that you're going to be required to take a picture from your country and attach in your international passport and send to them for visa stamping. So it must come in very, very strict dimensions. That's the passport that will be used for your PR card. So it's not a roadside studio. You just enter any roadside studio and say, Akim, snap me passport. Mbano. It is not this type. You have to go to those high bro studios that know what they are doing. I went to a very big studio, very expensive studio. We spent, was it 5,000 naira per, per person? I first went to one studio. They were telling me 10,000 naira. I ran. So I went to Studio 24. <laughs> I said, asking myself, if I knew I would have taken this thing at that other place, so if I was sure that they were going to give me the right thing, because the one I took at the second studio that I went to that charged us 5000 was rejected by IRCC. And when we came to Canada, we had to go to Staples and took another one. So the cost of the passport photograph is about 5000 per person. So if you're a family of six, you should be looking at 30000 So the next thing after taking the passport is to send your, is to dispatch your passports to the visa office yes and you have to pay dhl <laughs> hey god you have to pay for that i can't remember how much i paid this dispatch company is not just check the weight they also check the sensitivity of the materials so they considered international passports sensitive materials so it was a lot more expensive to dispatch okay so we had to put the passport photograph on our international passport and dispatched it to our visa office for stamping and that's another cost but not too expensive it's not up to a hundred thousand it's not up to one hundred thousand so while your visa is out there for stamping you know that shit has gotten real you are traveling so you just have to start the whole preparation worker which is another cost on its own so first you have to start getting ready all the documents that will help you when you come over here like your driver's license extract your no claims letter insurance letter all of that both for you and your husband very important because if you do not get it you're going to be penny wise pound foolish you come here 
and pay insurance that is 10 times of that money you were trying to run away from so to get that driver's license extract and all of those documents that you would need might cost you maybe 250,000 about 250,000 for you and your spouse okay um after that the next thing is for you to start booking your flight <laughs> If you're a big family, this is where another place where you hear we because the cost of flight is crazy. But not to scare you, some companies are cheaper than the others, depending on the company, of course, depending on the number of stops. That is why what Lufthansa did to me is so painful because I saw or we saw my husband and I saw so many other more affordable flights but we went with Lufthansa because the stops were shorter we paid more expensively because it was a shorter stop it was just from Nigeria Frankfurt to Calgary but after they sent us home with our bags without any provision they just sent us home no explanation that we should go home go to the office and go and book for another flight Whenever I, whenever I talk about that thing, it gets me really mad. The flight they eventually put us on was three stops. After we paid for two stops, or is it one stop? They now put us on a flight from Portacot to Abuja to Frankfurt to Toronto to Calgary. It was too hard. So, well, if you don't have many children, you can save some money going through longer stops, many, many stops. But we had a lot of children, so we paid more expensive because we didn't want stress. And we still ended up going through all that stress so for flights now you should be looking at between $1,600 to 1009 on the average little children I don't know what that children are cheaper I've forgotten but maxing it on the average you should be looking at at least 1700 per person so 1700 going with the exchange rate now is about 1.4 million 1.450 million that's almost 1.5 million per person so for a family of six if you have a big family that's budgeting about 8.6 million for flights for from nigeria to to canada yes it's expensive but as i mentioned earlier don't be scared <laughs> you might not have as much children right and you might find cheaper flights try to book earlier the sooner the travel dates the more the prices go up so try to book earlier go around check all the flights i also hear that they are cheaper times to book flights some say if you book in the night it's cheaper than booking in the morning just make your inquiries and see how you can get things a bit cheaper for yourself but that is the average mm -hmm. once you have um, taken care of the expense for flights the next thing you have to start looking for is accommodation whether you are going to stay temporarily at an airbnb or you're going to rent a house straight from nigeria depending on your luck and what is available to you we were not fortunate enough to get the house let me not call it misfortune because maybe god wanted us to come here and see the house we want for ourselves instead of somebody picking a house for us and we'll be regretting oh my god i don't like this place i wish we saw it by ourselves we wouldn't have picked this so everything worked out according to how god plans it no regrets at all so we we didn't get a house from nigeria we came to canada and we saw the house that we liked and we picked it so we stayed at an airbnb for almost one month two airbnbs as a matter of fact typically you are not going to find an airbnb less than hundred thousand hundred dollars that's the cheapest so you should be looking at 150 200 for two rooms we stayed in two rooms as well as a big family we didn't bother staying in a three-room airbnb we just managed a two-room airbnb for a family of four five six you can manage a two-room airbnb and for that kind of airbnb in the city that we stay in i don't think you can see anything less than 100 canadian dollars daily because we didn't see you'll see 150 200 250 300 so let me just max it at 150 per day okay no let me not take it off so let me just say maybe 120 per day which might be unlikely but let me just be modest with that figure and say 120 per day so yeah my camera battery died i don't even know to be sure where i stopped well let me just go and share i think i was talking about um airbnbs and how it is better for you to book for like 30 days you know just give yourself that one month knowing that within that 30 days bad as you bad you have a house we stayed at the first airbnb for um about two weeks almost two weeks not because we chose to but because of the cumulative effect of Lufthansa sending us home so some days that the Airbnb was lost and by the time it was time for us to check out of the Airbnb we still hadn't gotten a house so we had to start carrying our loads to the second Airbnb 
so you don't want that to happen to you especially when you have many children the stress will be too much so it's best you just book for one month and know that within that one month you will settle and get a house okay that's for those that are not renting from nigeria straight up so just um if you times that 120 average i gave you 120 dollars daily by 30 that's about 3600 canadian dollars for the first month um at the airbnb and in naira that's 3 million naira but if you get a house it will be cheaper of course you're not just coming as a new immigrant to start paying for a house of um three thousand six hundred dollars it will be a lot cheaper so just wait and know what can work for you then when you have taken care of your flight and where you're going to land and cover and stay under a roof when you get there in terms of housing or airbnb the next major expense you cannot even begin to um quantify the expenses that go on here is the expenses of buying and maybe cargo in for people like me that cargoed now i don't expect that everybody will travel as elaborately as i did as your pocket rich now so you go do right but me i really traveled over prepared so we spent a lot of money here because there's so many things to buy so many things to buy so many things to do food stuff alone food stuff is so expensive just fish and stock fish alone i know how much we spent on just as we and oboroko <laughs> dry fish and stock fish alone then you're talking about different a goosey or bolo crayfish in bags Oporo. ah god there was so much to buy you need to buy good wigs because you don't want to come here with sponge now uh, even if it's one or two good wigs that will be, will be it's not the one every day you'll be, you'll be coming here ah! at least even if you buy some sponge some mop stick it's good to buy at least one or two good hair that you'll be managing here because you will not be able to be braiding your hair all the time now so wigs are not even a luxury it's a necessity for those that are not on team natural me i'm not team natural at all i'm team wig so i had to go for wig shopping it was a lot of money to buy good wigs <laughs> if you hear the price of good wigs now eh, with the with the exchange rate you will shout <laughs> In fact, let your husband open here. He will say, "What money for half plot of land? You know where it is. What you are wearing on your head? You understand? So you buy things, underwear, boxes, many, many things. So all those buying and buying food stuff and all of that. On the average, for a big family like us, you won't and you want to travel like comfortably well. That you have things that you'll be using when you get here. You can't spend anything less than two million." you can't but for a smaller family of course it can be or for those that maybe do not have and just want to manage themselves out of nigeria and come here and you know hustle which is very okay you might now cut your coat accordingly but if you want to travel well like those things i dispatched oil or everything buying them alone cannot be less than two million then for dispatching dispatching um cargo in rather Cargoing is expensive, especially now, and it is packaging. So the cost of cargoing is packaging. And we cargoed, ah, we cargoed a lot of kg. We cargoed a lot. You saw when I did the unboxing. So for a family of six, you should be looking at up to 1.5 to cargo or 1.2. Not You cannot cargo that amount of things that I cargoed for less than 1 million. But if you do not have that much, you can cargo small. You start, when you start working here, you can buy at the African store or you can then tell your cargo plug to cargo for you. So it all depends on how much you have, um, how liquid you are and, you know, your your peculiar circumstance. So that is the average of what it will cost you from the beginning till the end. Then when you come here, ah, a lot of more expenses will be waiting for you. Now you have to buy a car. Cars are so expensive in Canada. I don't know what the situation is in US, but cars here to get a good car. If you are going to dealership, you'll be hearing twenty thousand dollars, twenty-two thousand dollars dealership. If you want to go to Facebook Marketplace, which is cheaper, but of course there are no warranties. You can try there too; it'll be a lot cheaper. But for you to get a six-seater for a big family, ha, it's expensive too. That's where your proof of funds will now come in. You can now start using your proof of funds to buy cars, buy groceries and settle in before, God willing, you get a job. Because it's not like you're coming and there's a job waiting for you. You don't know how long you would stay. You don't know how long you would wait before 
you get a job all right so that is what it is give or take as i mentioned earlier depending on your abilities depending on your family size depending on where you live in nigeria that is the average cost relocating through the express entry stroke federal skilled workers platform so let me know what you think in the comment section are there any things i forgot to mention i cannot mention everything that's the truth because there are small small spendings that might be peculiar to you or that you might not even remember but you know it's a process it takes years so there are expenses that you've been carrying along the way that you might not even take account of but these are the ones that i can remember so share your thoughts with me down in the comment section and let me know what you think about this whole process okay so i hope i've been able to answer your question for those that are asking Neze, what is the average cost apply these figures to your family size and you'll be able to arrive at an estimate all right so guys this video has finally come to an end finally <laughs> so guys this video has come to an end thank you for watching if you're new here don't forget to subscribe turn on your bell notifications give this video a big thumbs up and stay glued because we have so much more coming your way okay it's me your girl very Neze Nezongwa Neze Peperempe and this is Neze Peperempe I'll see you guys in my next one for now bye